My name is Lance Leachman. This is Purebred Cattle Management, and today we're going to discuss breeding principles. When sourcing genetics, you first have to look at what type of operation that you intend to be. So, are you a purebred breeder who is going to provide seed stock to the commercial industry or other purebred breeders, or do you intend to be a commercial breeder that produces livestock primarily for food consumption? Once you've done that, you need to basically set a number of goals or benchmarks for your operation as to where you intend to be from a production standpoint. So for instance, are you a herd that wants to be fertility and maternally oriented? Would you like to be a herd that produces terminal sires uh, that attain high growth rates? Or would you like to be a purebred breeder that has optimum levels of performance for a variety of traits and therefore can increase their marketing flexibility by having a very uh, unique cow herd from a lot of different perspectives? The two primary breeding programs that a lot of producers would put into action would first of all be natural service. So natural service simply entails taking a group of cows and putting them with a particular bull whose genetics you want to contribute to the next calf crop. The opposite of that, or another way to employ genetics from a bull standpoint, would be through artificial insemination. And that simply means using uh, stored or frozen semen on a bull and then impregnating the female with that uh, stored semen. That allows a lot of flexibility because you can source genetics that are possibly far away in distance or genetics that are very expensive that you wouldn't otherwise normally acquire with your given resources. So AI has been a way to improve rapidly the genetics because you're able to select the best for a particular trade or what you deem to be the best. We hopefully develop beef heifers so that they can be bred for the first time at about 15 months of age. If the gestation period is 283 days or about nine months, we would expect those heifers to uh, have their first birth event at about two months or two years of age. And then the goal of a beef cattle producer should be to have a cow always calve for the following 12 months throughout the rest of her life. The estrus cycle itself occurs every 21 days. So that simply means that there's an opportunity for the female to conceive or become pregnant every 21 days and that's not seasonal as in some species so in cattle we can follow that cycle and determine when we need to breed a cow or if she has been bred we can figure out if she has conceived or needs another breeding event to occur. Once a cow has been bred either naturally or AI we should monitor that cow uh, in the next 18 to 24 days within that time frame she will either come into heat again or she will not, and that means she's conceived. If she does come into heat, she'll be in standing heat for approximately 10 to 14 hours, and that's the period of time when she will allow a bull to be mounted. So if she needs to be bred again, that period of time is when she will allow the bull to uh, fertilize her. And then if she's going to be bred artificially or by AI, we need to find when she first came into standing heat and then wait 12 to 16 hours after that to AI the female for her next pregnancy. A good rule of thumb is if you see an animal in standing heat during the morning, you would breed her at night and vice versa. A cow in standing heat will basically be standing for a bull or another cow to ride her. When she is in her preheat period, she'll be restless, want to move around, she'll be very active, but she may not let an animal mount her and stand there for that animal to do that. When she comes into her standing heat period, she will actually relax a little bit and allow an animal or bull to mount her and breed her. And then after that, she'll go out of heat. And her out of heat period is similar to her preheat period and then she's still restless and moving around and active, but she won't let anything mount her in that particular time frame. But if a cow shows signs of heat one estrus cycle later from her first breeding event, uh, we need to determine again what bull we want to breed her to. And if she's already in pasture, we just need to record the day that she has come back into heat, uh, which bull that we did see breed her, or which bull was in that particular pasture to maintain good records of that breeding event because in that circumstance, she may have been bred to a different bull in the pasture than what her first service was to perhaps a different AI sire. So we need to make sure that those bulls are distinctly identified and that the date of that 
event is identified so then we can monitor possibly another 120 day, 21 days or we can figure out when she's going to uh, calve if she was indeed successfully bred. A non-breeding female would likely be a female that continually comes into her estrus cycle every 21 days and just for some reason uh, doesn't maintain her pregnancy or conception. A lot of times that will be an open female once we have pregnancy diagnosed her and those animals typically have poorly, uh, poor reproductive performance for a variety of reasons. It could be nutritional, it could be genetic, but the best practice would be to uh, give those cows an opportunity for 60 days to be bred and if they are indeed open to remove them from the herd so that we don't compromise our performance or our profit in our operation. Well, pregnancy diagnosis comes down to determining the number of days pregnant or how far into a cow's gestation she may be. Gestation length is 283 days, so we'll normally pregnancy check a female at least 30 days for ultrasound and possibly later for rectal palpation. So once a veterinarian or technician figures out the number of days pregnant that female is, we can backtrack and figure out when she was bred. Lester synchronization is just manipulating through the use of uh, feed additives or hormones when an animal is going to come into her breeding cycle. So by manipulating when we can breed a female, we can take large groups of females to be bred at the same time, or we can choose specific animals that we may want to have uh, breed or calve earlier in the season. So if we were to synchronize a large group of females, that would allow us to calve them in a very defined time. We would know when to expect those calves to arrive, and we would have hopefully a group of resulting calves that are similar in age and very consistent in the way that we can mark, market them later in life. So by manipulating that, we can hopefully increase our profitability, we can determine when we want to calve, and we can use our labor to meet the demands of the calving season most appropriately. While synchronization protocols differ vastly from operation to operation, there are many different ways to employ them. Uh, one that we use is a seven-day cedar co-sync protocol, and so in that circumstance, you would simply give a female a controlled internal drug release device, which is a cedar, and that's a progesterone to keep the female um, from coming into her estrous cycle. At the same time, she would be administered with a gonadotropin releasing hormone, such as cysterellin. After seven days, we would remove the cedar, and we would give that female a estromate shot or an estrogen shot or prostaglandin and that will induce cyclicity in that female and make her uh, reach her estrus cycle. She, she will uh, ovulate and release an egg and that allows us to either naturally or AI breed that female anywhere from 60 to 66 hours later. And once we have bred that female artificially, we can give her another shot of cysterellin or a gonadotropin releasing hormone and that will make sure that she has ovulated if she didn't already previously. Well, you need to consider the number of females that you want to breed at a particular time. Do you have the labor available to cab out a large group of females? Or do you need to spread out the number of females throughout the breeding season so that your labor isn't used up at the same time? What facilities do you have? If you're calving earlier and you have a large group of females, are you confident that you can provide adequate facilities to safely calve all those newborns out in a very short time period? And you also need to consider the cost of the operation. There is a cost to purchasing the drugs and the different hormones that you'll need to employ in a synchronization protocol. So is the expense worth the added conciseness of calving that you prefer? Or would you rather just AI those females on natural heats or possibly just kick them out to a pasture and breed them naturally with bulls? I think sourcing genetics is unique to every operation, but you need to clearly identify what your goals are from a production standpoint, what type of cattle and what performance levels within your cattle do you hope to attain, and then if you can identify sources of genetics that meet those goals, you need to get a hold of those genetics and put them into production. So if that's through artificial insemination by acquiring the best bulls for certain traits throughout the industry, or by simply purchasing natural service sires that reduce your labor requirements during the breeding season. Those are all choices unique to the operation, but just make sure that you do your research, uh, you look at the performance levels, you pay attention to the breeder's integrity, 
and develop a relationship with sources of genetics that allow you to be successful in the future knowing that those seed stock producers where you do find your genetics have your best interests in mind. Mm -hmm.